you doing today, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages? This is Jesse with the Common Nerd, and boy, is the marketing campaign for Rings of Power Season 2 kicking off. Yes, the billion-dollar disastrous dumpster fire that is Amazon Prime's wonderful adaptation of nothing more than a fan fiction based loosely, and I mean loosely, on the great works of J.R.R. Tolkien and similar and expanded universes as well. The Appendices, which is all Amazon's actually got access to, which of course is always their excuse for completely and totally screwing up the lore and making an absolute abomination out of everything J.R.R. Tolkien. Well, Lord of the Rings fans out there rejoice because it has only gotten even cringier after Entertainment Weekly's very, very cringe lovely little marketing campaign that looked like something that should have been right out of a young and the restless television daytime TV show soap opera drama. Well, they have doubled down ladies and gentlemen. Entertainment Weekly has now given us a another little advertising marketing campaign that is getting absolutely roasted by a lot of people out there in the comments. It's cringe as all get out. There is already a wonderful remix by Release the McCracken and of course reminding all of us of the one that our dear sweet quarter black Garrett did for us going over the last one. So we're going to show you last year's as well boys and girls to give you a very obvious point out of everything that's wrong with this ridiculousness and how much this absolutely feels like it's nothing more than a soap opera and can Considering some of the storytelling and some of the intrigue, quote unquote, that we've got coming on season two of Rings of Power, that's exactly what it probably is. This is nothing more than Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power, the soap opera edition. And that, boys and girls, is clearly from the fact that this is nothing more than sick, twisted, and weird fan fiction that is failing miserably and has lost over 95% of its audience just in season one. Boy, isn't season two going to be a right success, ladies and gentlemen? So we're going to show you this video clip from Entertainment Weekly. We're going to go over the whole story check give you some of the back history and all that kind of stuff but before we do if you do enjoy our content hit that like button share with all your friends and subscribe or follow if you have not already because we are inching our way closer and closer to 1100 and i could not do that without every single one of you also leave us a comment in the section down below let us know if you even bothered watching rings of power season one or if you're one of those people that turned into the first episode just to see what it was all about and then of course checked out long before the last episode like 95 percent of their audience actually did by the very last episode or Are you one of those simps for the spirit of the age out there and you are super, super excited for season two and you cannot wait to make all, make fun of all of our silly little ists and phobes out there that absolutely call this show out for the nonsense that it is? Let us know what you think about all that in the comments section down below. So Entertainment Weekly over here puts out this lovely little post. It's their pinned tweet, by the way, boys and girls. This just came out yesterday and it is still up here literally almost 24 hours after the fact that we actually we actually they've actually posted this out there so entertainment weekly puts out there prepare for darkness to rise in a sinister season second season of the lord of the rings the rings of power we hosted a family reunion with the fantasy's epic cast to discuss where the sprawling tale goes in our next latest cover story Oh, boys and girls, aren't you just so excited for all of the details you'll get about the Rings of Power and their 15-minute long trudge where it'll probably be all about black elves and about how he's really not a bad guy and there's just going to be a love story between the hero and literally one of the greatest villains in Lord of the Rings of all time. So let's check out this lovely little cringy trailer right here. Now, obviously, first off, let's get something right out of the way right here. Who the hell put Morford Clark in this, right? Okay, she's a cute girl, right? I don't have anything problem with her. I wouldn't kick her out of bed for eating crackers. But what the hell are you doing? Why does this make it look like she's got a pot belly? Why does it look like she's been sitting at the bar with me for oh, the last two years drinking down a 6 to a 12 pack every single night? Why does she look like she's three months pregnant in this dress? Why do you have this tucked down, down below her hips, where it's all going to make everything bulge out in the middle. Okay, first off, she's a lovely young lady. She's got a great figure. Yeah, if nothing else, she's got a great figure and very feminine features. Why would you put her in something like this? That's right, because you think that anything that might attract the male gaze is wrong and wrong. And this is what you think a powerful woman should dress like in this kind of abomination of a thing. But wait. It gets better, boys and girls, because we've got that days of our lives feel, right? And let's go back last year. Let's go to not too far back, right? From Quarter Black Garrett's lovely little clip right here, right? This was last year's Entertainment Weekly's lovely little thing right here, right? Do you understand why we get the days of our lives vibes? Now, obviously, they didn't have the music for the days of our lives, but of course, Quarter Black Garrett did us the favor of this. (laughs) 
it's literally a ripoff of the Days of Our Lives intro. Literally a ripoff from last year, right? Literally a ripoff from last year. Shout out to Cora Black Garrett for making, to not only pointing all of this out to everyone, and a lot of other people pointed this out as well last year, but for making this lovely video comparing it together to each other. So literally, now that you've heard just a little bit of that music, try watching this without hearing that. Because this is insane. This is absolute cringe. I mean, it's practically the exact same kind of aesthetic, the exact same kind of feel all over again, right? This, like, and don't get me wrong, like I said, I think Morgan Clark's a lovely girl. Like, her face looks nice in this. But what is up with this horrendously hideous dress? And trust me, I'm not the only ones. We're going to get to some of these comments down here on this post below in just a second. But, uh, here's your big bad, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't he just look scrumptious? Don't you girls just think you can change him? Yes, the guy literally responsible for murdering untold millions all across Middle Earth is the guy that they're trying to get you to simp for in this show. And also, we've already been basically told that Morford Clark's character and him, which is not a Galadriel in any way, shape, or form, Galadriel would have literally cut this guy's head off the second she found out exactly who he was, not getting, not falling in love with him and having a relationship, which, by the way, Galadriel's supposed to be married at this point and also have a kid. Where are they at? Oh, that's right. You can't have your stupid, simpy fan fiction love story where you fall in love with the bad guy that's murdered hundreds of millions of people all throughout Middle Earth. No, you couldn't do that if Morford Clark's character actually had a healthy relationship where she had a kid and a longing for a lost, long lost husband. No, no, no. You couldn't have that because that would completely and totally negate your fan fiction of all of you wanting to sleep with the bad guy because that's how sick and twisted you are. Instead of having a good person actually take care of you, look after you, help you out, be a partner in your life. No, all of you are simply attracted to the bad boy. Did any of you ever leave middle school? Like, did any of your maturity levels ever leave middle school? Clearly not. Clearly not. And I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. Like, the music's even kind of cringy and cheesy, if we're going to be completely honest. I mean, this is just dumb. It's just dumb. And look at this. You've got him looking longingly down at her because he's so, he just wants her. He needs her. He craves her. He just wants he's looking longingly down at her. Longingly. Because he's not the evil monster of Sauron that's only out there to completely and totally subjugate all of Middle Earth to his own evil and dark will and corrupt all things good out there. No, he's actually just a guy that was trying to be a good person, but this betrayal by the woman that he was starting to fall in love with and just turned out it was all, he was just so misunderstood. He was just so misunderstood. Oh, wow. So original in the modern era. Thanks, Amazon. I've never seen anything like this before. I mean, like I said, it just looks cringy. It's really weird. And this is one of the weirdest parts, too. And this is something that somebody in my chat pointed out to us. Evil takes root. Notice how he's on top of her. Now, I'm not saying that was intentional. But darkness rises in the Rings of Power Season 2, right? Well, now, who's really the evil here? Because she's standing at the roots of the tree. Is she where that evil takes root? Are Sauron and her going to have a baby? Now, I'm not saying that that's probably going to happen. But honestly, at this point in time, in the modern era, with the kind of abomination storytelling they're doing with people at this point, tell me, the fact that we do already know Galadriel has a kid, right? And by the way, her husband's nowhere to be found in this series. Would it surprise a single one of you out there? that we're going to end up getting an adult scene between Galadriel and Sauron, and she's going to end up pregnant. Would it surprise any of you at this point? And also, that would explain that little belly bump she's got in the dress too, now wouldn't it? Oh my, oh my, oh my. Like I said, did they not learn anything 
from the last one and going over this stuff. And before we get into the comments, I just want to give a little credit where credit is due. Shout out to Release the McCracken for making sure we got the proper music that this intro actually deserves. This clear ripoff and adaptation of last year's intro. And I mean, let's be honest. Are you ever going to be able to watch that and not hear that? Shout out to Release the McCracken. Definitely go check him out over there on social media. But here's the comments. Our dear sweet X-ray girl, she has a hungry snatch. Clearly, as you can tell from this being tucked down in here all the way right around her pubic area. Yeah, it looks literally looks like it's trying to eat her dress. Good call. Nina Infinity, after all the memes that came from these ads during the first season, I'm surprised that they doubled down for another run. I'm not. Let the memes begin. Also, what is that dress design? Yes, thank you. Flash, did Halloween USA do the costumes for this? That Star Wars girl. They need to stop trying to turn every franchise into Twilight. Thank you. Thank you. Not everybody needs to fall in love with the monster. Sometimes monsters really are just evil, rotten people that would just use and manipulate you for their own purposes. Which, of course, is I'm sure exactly what Galadriel is going to find out in season three or by the end of season two. And she's going to be so heartbreaking. And that's going to drive her motivation to take out Sauron. Mark my words, boys and girls, because she's going to try to change him. Corrine points out, show his aides. Amazon's billion dollar failure. Rear heads once again. Shout out to Dread Roberts. Absolutely. Shout out to the pirate Dread Roberts. Uh, even Eddie Mon over here. Hell, the hamster wheel continues to spin. John Douglas says, look at the Hollywood PR bot accounts in the comments. Yeah, unfortunately enough, we've already drowned them out because at the end of the day, it is still an algorithm, boys and girls, and we can win. George! Shout out to George the Giant Slayer. Talk about slow learners. EW, did you, did, you did the same thing last year, promoting pandering of powers like a Vagisil commercial that millions roasted you for. Quick question, is everyone at Entertainment Weekly and Amazon a DEI hire? Hmm. Yep. And check this out. John F. Trent. Rings of power telling the acolyte, hold its beer. Disaster is incoming. And yes, that's exactly what this is going to be. This has to be the fastest way I have ever seen anyone burn a billion dollars, boys and girls, because that's what Amazon shelled out for the rights and the production of something they're committed to from what we've heard. And as of right now, hasn't changed so far. Five seasons of this abomination. Five seasons of this embarrassment. How long before they stop drop before they start dropping rings of power seasons all at once to try to hide the numbers and hide abysmally bad the ratings are? I would put dollars to donuts that the season premiere will probably not even chart on the Nielsen and Samba TV ratings. And if it does, just because so many of us are masochists and you just have a sick fascination with car accidents, we'll, the, it'll get a little bit of a bump from the first premiere episode and immediately fall off the charts. It will be worse than Star Wars The Acolyte. I would put dollars to donuts. It is going to be worse than that. I agree with John F. Trent. Amazon is saying, Star Wars, hold my beer. Because we're about to show you how much of a disaster is Dumpster Fire and how you can burn a billion dollars even faster than what Disney Star Wars burned it. And boys and girls, I thought that was a record that was never going to be beat. But shout out to Jeff Bezos. Shout out to all the VEI requirements over there at Amazon Prime Studios that that crazy head of studios over there and entertainment development over there is doing and requires. Because shout out, you've pulled it off. Rings of Power has checked every single box that you wanted. You've got a strong wham and power protagonist. You've got a bad boy that's just misunderstood that you can all fall in love with. And then, of course, you've got all of your box checking with your race swapping, diversity swapping. And for some reason, you've got a thing against transgender people because real dwarves have beards. Even the females, ladies and gentlemen. But you know what Amazon doesn't have? A Lord of the Rings television show. What they have is a disastrous dumpster fire that is complete and total trash and is nothing more than fan fiction that everyone in the audience out there has rejected. Even the simps, even the people that they flew out to promote season one of this show later admitted that they did not even get around to watching the show or finishing the season. 
That's how bad this is. This is a disastrous dumpster fire. And shout out once again to Amazon Studios for being holding the record in entertainment for the fastest way to burn a billion dollars in real time. Congratulations, Rings of Power. You're an abomination. You're an absolute disgrace to the great man that is J.R.R. and always will be and was and I'm sure is smiling his butt off over there and up in heaven, laughing his ass off with C.S. Lewin at this abomination and how much of it a failure it is. Because after all, Jeff Bezos and Amazon rings of power, you get exactly what you deserve, and you did it to yourself. Burn, rings of power, burn. You will only ever be remembered as the disastrous dumpster fire of fan fiction and abomination and disrespect to Lord of the Rings that you always have been. And you did it to yourself.